In today's video we're going to unbox and take a first look at what I think is probably the most budget friendly laptop I have seen in a few years. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech travel and inspiration and if you like this video after watching it I would be really happy if you wanted to subscribe to the channel and maybe turn on the notifications as well. That helps me out a lot and gives you all the content I'm going to be putting out in the upcoming weeks and months and there's plenty coming out. Over the last 12 months I have made review series about three different laptops, Dell Inspiron 15 7000, Acer Swift 5 and now lately about Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. These laptops fall roughly in the same price category, around 1000 euros. They're not super premium, but they're still premium enough to be sort of expensive and not like proper budget laptops. Many times during this last year, I've been looking out to find a really budget friendly alternative to make a review about. Lately, with the rise of AMD's Ryzen series, both Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, we have some proper budget-friendly alternative that still will probably have a pretty decent performance. Most of the time when I've been looking at budget alternatives and sales, there's always the Celeron processor or the Pentium processor, and those are more kind of like tablet or Chromebook style. And then when you find something that has an i5 or an i7, which is a 4-core processor that should be sort of capable, even if it's not super powerful in those cheap alternatives, then usually it has 4 gigabytes RAM or a 128 gigabyte SSD or maybe an HDD or a really crappy display or several of those things combined. A few days ago I was browsing one of the retailers in Sweden's website and I ran into this laptop which is an Asus VivoBook 14 that has Ryzen 5 but only a 3500U. Together with 8GB of RAM and 256GB SSD this sounds like it could be a pretty capable machine and the price tag was only 400 euros. So this was with a pretty heavy sale, but sales come up on laptops all of the time on all the different brands. So I figured, oh what the heck, I'm just gonna order one of these and uh, I'll test it out and I'll see how it performs. I don't have too high expectations, but still, if it can perform at any level for 400 euros, it will be a machine that I will be able to bring along wherever I go without fearing that it would get damaged or stolen like I would with some of those more expensive machines. Today in the afternoon I went to the local store where I had ordered the VivoBook to be delivered and I picked it up and I got it right here. A pretty decent sized box for such a cheap machine and we're gonna see now how it feels at first glance. Let's get into unboxing this thing. The outside of the box here is not that special, it's a pretty plain one. On the front it says ASUS VivoBook and ASUS down in the corner. On the side you got some uh, serial information and specifications and here you got the same serial numbers and specifications and it is a 14 inch Full HD display, it has an AMD Ryzen 5 3500U. It says HDD but I think it's supposed to say SSD. 256 gigabyte PCIe Gen 3, 4 gigabyte onboard RAM and 4 gigabyte DDR4 RAM that is in a sodium slot. Then it has a Wi-Fi 5, USB 2.0, USB 3.1a and USB 3.1c. Windows 10 64 bit and a Nordic keyboard layout and a 37 watt hour battery which is probably one of the big weaknesses of the laptop, that it has such a weak battery. To get into it, you would actually not pull these guys out, which I try to do a lot, on this side and then open it up, straight up like this. You can see here it says, in search of incredible. Uh, I guess we'll have to see about that, see how incredible it can be. Here I suppose we have the power cord. So the power cord comes out, it's a very small sized power cord for sure. This power adapter is one of the smallest I have ever seen. How much power would this deliver? This is a 45 watt power adapter. And the plug is this kind of regular barrel connector. 
Let's take the machine out, put it to the side and see if there's anything else here. In search of incredible user guide and warranty card. That's it. I must say I really like this opening experience where you open it up and this in search of incredible sign comes out like it kind of folds out like that. It's uh, definitely more of a premium feeling than I thought I would get from 400 euros. Taking the laptop out of the little sleeve, we can see here on the side the port selection. This one comes with the barrel connector, with HDMI, with a USB port, a USB-C port and a headphone microphone combo jack. On the other side we find a micro SD card reader together with another USB-A port and a Kensington lock. In the bottom here we have a few ventilation grills over there but the speakers are unfortunately placed on the bottom so no top firing speakers like I was very happy to have on my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. Opening it up we can see that it also has a little bit of this ergo lift thing where it lifts up the laptop a bit here so that it allows for some more airflow and ventilation to go into the fans. We can see here that it's kind of a nice cut out keyboard that is cut out from the top plate. It has ergo lift hinge, it has a nano edge display and it has USB type C which I suppose won't be compatible with either USB-C charging or DisplayPort. But I have to test those things out to see how they work. One thing I can see already that I find a bit annoying is the keyboard layout that doesn't have the full size enter key. Sometimes when I'm trying to type fast in this kind of keyboard, I would have a pretty big problem with enter keys when they are not full size. There's definitely keyboard flex here when pushing down in the middle of the keyboard, but on the sides it's not very bad. Tried to type on it, it's actually a bit better than I thought it would be. I would just assume that a laptop that is this cheap would have a really crappy keyboard as well. I'm positively surprised. PCs often have pretty flimsy trackpads, but this one feels really good actually. So much better than I would have assumed it would be. This doesn't really come down a lot and it has a solid click to it, but it doesn't really collapse when I do the hard click here. That's very interesting to see. Let's get some power into the laptop, start it up and see how the screen looks. We get the same Asus in search of incredible. Hi there, I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. After filling out all of the things that Windows want to get information from us about, we are now setting up the Windows installation and we can then finally see how the laptop behaves at first impression. Alright, we are in Windows and we can see right away that it's definitely a quite washed out screen. It's also a TM panel, so viewing angles are not going to be great. You probably need to watch it from the front to be able to get any decent form of uh, experience from this. However, the backlight in combination with the fact that it's a matte panel makes it kind of okay, I think, for this indoor environment. I will have to try it outdoors to see how it works there, but at the moment the main thing I notice is that it's pretty washed out colors wise. Also now just at idle we have some fan noise kicking in. It's not very loud but it's there and it is without doing anything at all with the laptop. 
Now that we have the laptop installed, let's try if it works to open it with one hand. No, the hinge is definitely too stiff for it to open with one hand. Let's try and see if it works to charge off of USB-C. There is uh, nothing at all happening when plugging in a USB-C cable here. So we can for sure say that it doesn't support charging via USB-C. Last but not least, let's have a bit of a listen to the speakers and see how they sound. situation in Chernobyl is stable. In terms of radiation, I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest x-ray. Well, you are dealing with something that has never occurred on this planet before. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a few different monitor setups to use external monitors with the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. I'm W2Best and I make videos about tech travel and inspiration. And if you like this video, it would be super nice to see you as a subscriber to this channel, that helps me out a lot and gives you all the content I'm going to be putting out in the upcoming weeks and months. If you're anything like me... I also had to take a quick look at the SSD because I was a bit confused whether it actually was a 256GB SSD in it. And it is. It is a Western Digital SN520 NVMe SSD. I will come back with a full review and some use case examples where I show what I think this laptop absolutely works for and what I think is probably not the best option for. I am really excited to finally have the opportunity to test a very cheap laptop and be able to find out if it's worth getting something that is super cheap. Because all the ones I've used before hasn't been in anywhere near this price range. If you want to see more videos about this laptop, other laptops and other stuff that I'm putting out, please subscribe to the channel and then I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day. Bye bye.